So in September, we celebrate what is called as a World Narcolepsy Day. And the month is celebrated as a Narcolepsy Awareness Month. What is the reason for focusing on this month or the day? Primarily to increase awareness about this condition, to help with the diagnosis, complications, and that patients can get help earlier and faster. I'm Dr. Manveet Bhatia, a senior neurologist and a sleep specialist with more than 30 years experience from Delhi, India, and have published data on, on about my patients also on who have been on our follow-up and diagnosed with narcolepsy. So first of all, what is narcolepsy? A narcolepsy is a condition of the brain in which the chemicals which regulate our wake and sleep function are not working well in very, very simple terms. But they have a lot of the same chemicals work on lots of other areas. They help with the mood, with the appetite regulation, energy, etc. So they have a lot of implications or impact on the individual. Talking about the common or the most common symptoms of narcolepsy. First symptom is increased daytime sleepiness. And this sleepiness is very, very severe attacks of sleepiness in which they cannot control themselves from falling asleep. This can happen while sitting, reading, working, in school, during an exam, and up to the point of even while eating, talking, and a sudden attack of sleep will come. So they are uncontrollable, irresistible attacks of sleep. And this is despite having an adequate number of hours of a night's sleep. The second is something called a cataplexy. This is an interesting uh, symptom. Often gets missed um, as a fall or a fainting episode. So what happens is that they are triggered by an emotional reaction. This means that suddenly hearing a very exciting news at a patient who was uh, watching a match and he fell off the sofa as another person who was listening to a joke and suddenly fell down. So the body loses muscle tone and there could be a major cataplectic attacks that they can fall down or they could be minor. I had an individual who while going for an interview uh, used to stammer for a while and then recover. So those could be minor or suddenly you get nervous and you drop something. So these are the minor events or they could be a major event which is a fall. Some of these events sometimes may occur without an emotional trigger. The third one is very, very vivid dreaming. The point of almost like these are called as hallucinations. They feel really real. This can occur just when you fall asleep immediately and it can also occur in the naps. So these kind of dreams are a key that something is um, else is going wrong. There's another entity called as sleep. Uh, paralysis. This is a phenomena that while you are asleep, either at the beginning or it can happen in the middle or towards the waking time, there's a transition between sleep and wakefulness is not smooth. So what happens that you are partly awake and you try and call out to somebody and you will feel that my body can't move and I cannot call out. So thus, it's a sleeping kind of partially asleep and partly awake and it's a frightening experience. And these episodes are called as sleep paralysis. But just to remind you that sleep paralysis can occur by itself does not always mean it is narcolepsy. But when with the excessive daytime sleepiness, cataplexy, and then sleep paralysis can be a fourth symptom. One of the other additional features which has been listed recently is a very disturbed night sleep. So because a hormone which is deficient, the orexin, not only produces excessive daytime sleepiness, but also impairs the quality of the night sleep. So it's a very disturbed sleep that they come with. 
But so these are the major components of narcolepsy. And they don't all come at the same time. So they can come one by one, and it can be many years before the individual has four. And thus, this is the reason that there is a marked or a considerable delay in the diagnosis to the tune of almost eight to 10 to 12 years. And these symptoms can start in teenagers. And that time they are labeled as lazy, um, sometimes as depression, uh, because they don't have energy. So they are then treated for all these things, but somehow with no good result. And they do develop depression. Depression can come along with this because the self-esteem is low, work output is low, productivity is very low. Um, so I do hope that in this awareness month, and by the time we reach the end of the month, we would have created awareness that all those patients who are sitting undiagnosed with this condition can come forward and then we can evaluate them further. Thank you for your attention and working together for narcolepsy on this Narcolepsy Awareness Month.